Welcome to CES 2024. We have the two big daddies from the tech world, Mr. Gary Shapiro, CEO of CTA, which is the Consumer Technology Association, the biggest tech show in the world. It doesn't need an introduction. So is this man sitting in front of me, Mr. Kaushal Navrikar, President, Reliance Digital, one of the biggest retail chains in India. And we have this big interview, which sets the tone for the year. And I can't wait to begin. You have to stay tuned because there's lots more that you'll learn and take it from there. So Gary, what are the numbers this year? Well, we have great numbers. There's been tremendous growth. You know, since COVID dipped us down and people weren't meeting, we've just grown a lot and double digit growth for every measure we have. Okay. So to give you some numbers, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll do it in square feet rather than square meters, but right. it's 2.5 million square feet of exhibit space. Uh, could you just convert this into a football field? I was hearing some context for that. Uh, it's over 30 football fields, yeah. American football fields. Not uh, uh, Last year, by comparison, we had 2.28 million. So that, there's 300,000 square feet, more than that mm -hmm. difference. And that would put us just that 300 square feet as one of the 30 largest shows in the United States. Mm -hmm. We have attendance of over 130,000. This year? Yes and including one third of that will be from overseas. We'll have over 4,000 exhibitors mm -hmm. uh, in, in probably a dozen different facilities around Las Vegas. And this is clearly, clearly the global technology event. It's bigger than any other event. Uh, it's being called by that by the media. It's the, the technology event where the leaders in the world, like mm -hmm. you guys, come and see everything. And we'll have, uh, we may even hit 6,000 press that are here in terms of, which is, so in terms different. of visitors, the percentage increased from last year? Uh, well, we had about 118,000. We'll end up with uh, over 130,000. So it's, it's double digit. Double digit. What is the biggest change since last year? You know, the, the, the biggest changes that we've gotten, it's just not consumer technology. It's a business to business event, about 30 to 40% of it. And we're seeing that from the, the keynoters we're having, like L'Oreal, Hyundai, uh, uh, Siemens, they're not traditional, and we're seeing that all over the floor. Yeah. We're seeing, and, and the overall theme is sustainability, so a, a lot of companies like that, and they are part of that, and they're showing what they're doing in a green way. I mean, they're really focused on amazing products, but they're also focused on uh, the, the footprint sustainability. Gary, what is the uh, most amazing tech that you've seen in CS24? So there's so many different solutions to problems. Um, whether it's in healthcare technology, because uh, there's a world shortage <coughs> of doctors and nurses and technicians, and COVID taught us one thing, we could, we could do more remotely, we, do, we could do remote medicine, diagnosis, even treatment. You can know when you, if you have to go in for emergency help or not, and that's really important. People are living longer, uh, more ailments are cured, but they're more likely to stay at home. And their, and their loved ones, their family want to take care of them. And they could do that. They could monitor them remotely. They can know if they're taking their pills. You can know if they fell. There's devices where if they, they're likely to fall, they're like airbag bags for the body I've right. seen. Uh, so just in healthcare alone, and then in mobility. Oh my gosh, this is the world's largest wow. auto show now. Some 500 companies are showing auto products. And it's not just auto, it's mobility including air taxis air and taxis. things that fly and drones and, and boats that are electric. And, and, but also the, uh, the things that help with agriculture. So Kaushal, what is the most amazing tech that caught your attention at CES this year? I, before I respond, Ramesh, I want to once again congratulate Gary for again pulling off a massive event. Double digit growth year on year, infrastructure growing, people going, exhibitors going, international visitors growing. Uh, speaks great things about this event and, and, and I always look forward to this every year. I check, I think he answered it very well, Ramesh. This, this is so much, right? So A, improving life, quality of life, how we live our lives every day, everything around it, right? From transparent screens, which change both a B2B and a B2C, um, sensors which make driving really, really going beyond the human eye. Yeah. Um, uh, AI getting integrated with everything. Our chairman in a recent speech spoke. Uh, AI is also termed as all-inclusive. It's really putting everything together. Yeah. It's making uh, smart products more smarter. Right? Everything it's has got AI. Absolutely, right? Yeah. So it's just making smart products much more smarter. So yeah, it's been it's been phenomenal walking the floor and seeing all the stuff that we continue to see. We still have some more time to go. How do you see technology driving retail? 
That's a very, very good question, Ramesh. Because right, till now, whatever we spoke is about B to C, right? Mm-hmm. How it impacts consumers. But as new experiences keep on coming, as as new products and technology keep on coming, we have to make our shop flows far more productive. And at being at the at the forefront of driving technology in India, uh, we've seen that uh, evolve a lot. So big data, AI, even there. When does a consumer walk in and go on the left, right? How much time does he spend? How do you demonstrate the right products? You, know, you have. When you have 300,000 square feet, you can really do differently. How do you take a 10,000 square feet and build that experience? Is it being productive or not? How do you tie in your sales to your experience? I think all of these are are doing. How do you make it attentive but less intrusive? How do you make shopping without someone's help but at the same time everything available at the fingertips? I think this is where we continuously involved. Every year, uh, uh, you know, we allocate budgets to make store stores far more. Um, technological oriented which helps decision making in the back end for us and big data will be at the epicenter of it. So we see a lot of robots moving around you know so we see robots with AI powered in the stores very soon. I, 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 one of the things I realized robots used to be earlier and this is a very very personal or philosophical takeaway it used to be automating a task right. I think the flavor that we are seeing currently in robotics is companionship. It's aiding decision making, right? It's it's, it's more it's it's getting emotional. It's I think, scary. yeah. So so I don't know, how much does it really automate? No, but the way it's talking about robots are being used on education or when when you're not at home. And he mentioned about aged people and everything. So how all of that is getting integrated? Yeah, I think that becoming a consumer product. I see that really really very soon. I hope to see them on our shelves. So uh, what? companies to watch out for if you have to pick say four because otherwise there will be many companies to watch out for it's like i have <laughs> three thousand children here and you're saying which companies i should watch out for exactly i think you should watch out the companies for the companies that are quick to market mm-hmm. uh they're focusing on generative ai and how that will make a difference and those that will uh, be able to pivot and stop something if it's not working one of the more impressive presentations I heard was from the CEO of Walmart, you know, one of the world's largest retailers. Right. And they were talking about how they're using their app so that you could show you clothing you're considering, share it with your friends. They could tell you which one to buy. They could see different choices on a real, on a model. Maybe the model will look like you. And then, you know, you're, you're combining the in-store shopping experience yes. with the at-home shopping experience and giving consumers choice and, and real feedback so they don't make mistakes. One of the big problems in the United States is product returns. Right. Americans think they have a constitutional right to return any product. Exactly. That, that's not culturally, I know, around the world, the big problem. And there's also uh, another solution at retail that I'm seeing, I saw a lot of around the floor, was helping combat retail theft, uh, identifying uh, what, what's going on while preserving the privacy of the shoppers. Because uh, in the United States, uh, a lot of the retail profitability has gone away because of retail theft. So, Kaushal, with 5G and broadband penetration in India, 5G has taken off in a big way. How do you see Reliance Digital riding this wave? I, I think gaming is really falling off the charts in India, right? So, A, we had a pan India 4G, in a 5G, we had the fastest deployment. Uh, you're seeing contribution of gaming PCs significantly higher. People are upgrading. Uh, so I think, and gaming will be one of the key applications when you have a pan-India 5G network. Uh, our teams, and, and for us that segment is, is very, very critical. We are establishing ourselves as... Are the numbers going on? Gaming? Oh, absolutely. And, and we are establishing ourselves as the destination for anything to do with gaming. It's both console and desktop and laptop gaming. And, and mobile gaming. So, uh, Gary, gaming globally, you see a big trend happening? Like, it's still on a very big upwards... Gaming mm, strong. Sometimes it's, it's cyc- plat- sometimes it's cyclical, depending upon a new platform when it's introduced. Uh, but one of the things we're seeing is how people are experiencing it. Obviously, there's been a shift to mobility. Uh, your smartphone, your tablet, now your your desktop and your yes. laptop are coming yes. back big. But also the TV set is so inexpensive compared to where it was. It's a very deflationary product. But but as with more and more TV set with streaming, it's becoming the centerpiece for the home. 
It allows, obviously, greater uh, sharing and interactivity so people can share their experience. But they're also sharing it online. They're sharing it even in different yes. rooms of the house. They could be playing against each other. So, you know, uh, Sony has launched Afila with Honda. Xiaomi has launched a car. Apple is working on a car. Is C is responsible for getting all these brands to start getting into automotive? Well, I don't think we're responsible. I think <coughs> our job is to be the catalyst in the marketplace for efficient innovation. And, and, and now anyone who's focused on innovation can't do it alone. So it's all about partnerships. That's, that's what's changed in the last few years, not only in technology, but in the business world. If you want to be able to succeed in business, you have to be able to deal in teams. You have to be able to deal across cultures. You have to be able to deal with partners. And it has to be a win-win partnership situation. And that's something that's changed. And that's what CES does, is it has, you know, the over 4,000 exhibitors are often cutting deals with each other, they're going to each other's exhibits. Because no one has the intellectual property themselves, no one has all the ideas. And innovation is simply getting two diverse ideas together, or technologies, and creating something even better. And the other thing that's going on big, and there's chip companies all over the place, obviously the chips. Uh, the advanced chips help drive a lot of different things, and we're seeing so much advancement in that. And there's other areas, we're seeing advancements in quantum computing, uh, obviously robotics. Uh, and, and as we've, 5G is now just increasingly commonplace and we're looking at more and more advanced technologies which allow us to do all sorts of things. Uh, obviously it affects everything from cyber currency to cyber security. Right. And, uh, and generative artificial intelligence is the talk of the show because if, if things oh, yeah. can learn about you and what you like and what you do or learn and take all the information that's out there and put it together in a way which is meaningful, it's, a, it's a, obviously a productivity tool, it's a factory productivity tool, it's a, it's a white collar workforce tool, but it also will allow us to, to make jumps that we haven't been able to make in terms of healthcare and, and personalized medicine and actually what works and what doesn't depending upon your own genetic code, right. your biology, where you live, your sex, your uh, everything about you that you've experienced including what you eat and it may tell you when you get into your car your seat may say to you you know you're about to get sick maybe you should take some vitamin b12 and you should do this or do that Correct. or take this vaccine so, so that's the question you know do you think that automotive space is really up for a big disruption because all these technologies a tech company like a vivo Oppo, samsung they are much better place since they're all and it's all electric cars so you think they're going to disrupt and there are many teslas coming our way you see uh, that's a really interesting car. question. So I think there's tremendous disruption, especially if we, as we go to self-driving, yeah. because then the environment of the car is anything you want. It could be an office, it could be an entertainment, it could be a place that we, we all just go to sleep and get where we want. And there's a, be a lot, uh, it'll take the burden off the healthcare system, it'll empower people that are older or people with disabilities. Right. Uh, self-driving, this global shift to electric cars I think this can affect, have some bumps in the road because uh, number one, there's a lock on essential elements with China and there's just not that much of them. Two, there's a limit on, uh, they're electric cars, but electricity comes from somewhere Someday. and it's often based on fossil fuel and, yeah. and there's not this rush towards nuclear. There's a lot more solar and, and to a certain extent wind, but the reality is, is that coal burning it's plants strange. are being built every week in China. Sure. So electric cars are the future but it's not the only future. And I think the, the hybrid approach may become more popular because in the United States, people are concerned that the charging station situation has not been resolved. There's issues with fixing an electric car that make it rather expensive to fix. I mean, really expensive to fix. There's issues with fires of the batteries. It's uh, very difficult to put out a fire in an electric car battery. So electric cars provide a lot of answers. But I think there'll be some issues that have to be confronted as we get there because there's not enough electricity to, or charging stations to power them today. Right. Ramesh, just as a follow-up, your question is not about an automotive development. Here, all the use cases are becoming ubiquitous. Right. So today, healthcare, getting integrated in an automotive, right? When you sit and say, okay, I'm, you, you might fall sick, is not an automotive development per se. I think right now, as more and more devices are getting connected, all of these apps and use cases are coming together and which is going to benefit life. Uh, if you have to really pick up something which will disrupt completely globally, you know, in terms of technology, like a couple of years back, there was this all foldable smartphones, which today we see reality. Every smartphone has a foldable phone, right? Today, I see when I walk around, Samsung has uh, launched a mic, transparent LED, LG has launched and, I, and every brand is doing something on transparent LED etc 
do you think that's the biggest takeaway as a physical product from CES 2024 or is there something else that you see as setting the trend I'm going to use a cliched word I think it's still going to be AI yeah because it's going to just keep on evolving in making smart products smarter that's continuously your driving experience is going to be better your picture viewing experience whether it's a transparent led your personalization of audio the way you listen all of this is going to cut across that's one technology from my side i i i'm i'm with the ai generative ai is so important and that is transformational and we're seeing already seeing it develop quickly uh it's something where people are taking advantage of i was with a bunch of CIOs in a major American city that have a group they get together chief information officers for the companies in a manufacturing city and they were ecstatic they were like wow we're getting reports done in you know 2 hours it would take yeah. us 3 months we're able to pivot quickly we're able to take our customer relation uh, our customer information and do things with it we've never been able to do before this is just transformational this is like the internet itself i, I don't get you know i've not gotten over the years excited in the hype of of metaverse or 3D TV or some of the other things that everyone's talking about but I am caught up with the artificial intelligence in the long run I believe in it I believe it's going to fundamentally change the world so AI it is guys this is the biggest takeaway dive deep into AI learn everything about AI because that's going to change the way you live eat breathe think love and whatever you do and that's the two gentlemen here thank you so much for your time